Question 20, 2011, Higher Maths Paper 1. We have this fairly complicated function here. We're asked to identify its domain and the corresponding values that the function takes. Now, it may help if you imagine that a function is a number processing machine. So basically a number goes in, it's processed and a number comes out. So a value of x goes in and a value of this comes out. Uh, a number processing machine. And what we mean by the domain, if you imagine a, a big tub of all the possible numbers that we are allowed to put in here, like 8, 7.4, 13 and all the rest of it. Numbers that we're allowed to put in. And there's the barrel and the name is the domain. Now you might think all possible numbers are in there, all real numbers are in there, but that's not true. If we look, and let's look at what this means, the sign of whatever the square root of x minus 2 is, and then we have to square that, that's what this means. Um, there are problems that might arise, certainly not with squaring, we can square any number, certainly not with taking the sign of a number, we're allowed to take the sign of any number at all, certainly not taking two away from a number, that's allowed, but there is a problem with taking the square root of a number. We cannot take the square root of a negative number and get a real value out of it, a real number out of it. So we've got to avoid putting numbers that produce a negative under the square root sign. And that would mean that the smallest number we can possibly put into this bucket is 2. Anything less than 2, we get a negative here. Square root of a negative number does not give you a real value. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Actually, being equal to 2 is OK. 2 minus 2 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. The sine of 0 is 0. And then if we square 0, we get 0. So we'd put 0 in. 0 would come out. So the domain, all the real numbers that are greater than or equal to 2. So that takes care of D the domain. The corresponding values of gx, this is sometimes called the range. There's a bucket here that uh, if we put every single number that's in the domain into this machine for processing and gather all the possible answers out of the machine, then we have what's called the range. Now, the, the word range wasn't used in this question, but that's basically what the corresponding values of g of x are. So the, all x's go in, we gather out all the values that come out, and we get the range of the function. Um, we therefore have to look a bit closer at this uh, expression. Um, the heart of this is that we are taking signs of, well, what's the smallest this could possibly be? As we said, zero, but the square root of numbers bigger than zero, they can get as large as you like. So we're taking signs of values from zero upwards. Square root of x minus 2, if we use any number greater than or equal to 2, the answer to the square root of x minus 2 will be zero or larger. So we know the sign can produce anything from minus 1. This goes on and on forever. Anything from my value of minus 1 up to 1. 
And there's it starting at zero. All the numbers from zero upwards. Here are the values. The height on this graph show the values that sine takes. So the values that come out in the bracket here are anything from minus 1 to 1. We're then squaring these numbers. And you know that squaring numbers, you always get positive numbers or zero. Here's the, the squaring um, graph. Squaring numbers from minus 1 uh, up to 1. Minus 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. Anything between minus 1 and 1 squared will be some value between 0 and 1. For instance, minus a half squared would give you positive a quarter. A half squared would give you positive a quarter. 0.1 squared would give you 0 0.01. Minus 0 0.1 squared would give you minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.01 sorry um, so there we go squaring values between minus 1 and 1 will produce values between 0 and 1 including 0 and including 1 so the range of this function the val possible values that come out when you put all the values in the domain out is any value between 0 and 1. Now, as I said, we are allowed 0. When you put 0 in there, 0 comes out. And when you put a number in here that produces 1, for the sign of the root of x minus 2, that would be pi up in 2, it gets a bit complicated, but if the square root of x minus 2 was pi up in 2, uh, we'd get a value of 1 squared and then you'd get 1. So we actually do get 1 for uh, a value in here. So it's anything from 0 to 1, including 0 and 1. So if we have a look at the um, choices, there they are. I've covered them up a wee bit here. But if we look at choice D, x is greater than or equal to and 0 is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to 1. So it's choice D.